Hello everyone, this is Raghunath from Chinta Academy. In number theory, existence-based proof type problems are not always direct. It involves further understanding of numbers and more detailed concepts. As an example, we will now tackle with a problem using an in-depth theorem called as Wilson's theorem in number theory. This deals with divisibility of prime numbers. This concept will be useful for students preparing for IOQM and AMC exams, which are the preliminary exams of math olympiads in India and America. So let's get started. Let us try to solve a problem. Let P be a prime number such that it leaves remainder 1 when divided by 4. So it's a prime of the form 4k plus 1. And we are supposed to prove that there exists an integer n such that P divides n square plus 1. So symbolically, for every prime of the form 4k plus 1, we need to prove p divides some number squared plus 1. We need to prove such a number n exists. So let's not solve this directly. Let's go through some other way. Because p is a variable prime. It can be any prime. And we are now going to prove it for a general prime. So it's not a very nice expression that we are going to prove. We are just going to prove its existence. So we can go in some other way. Let us talk about Wilson's theorem. Here is the Wilson's theorem. It states that let m be a natural number greater than 1. Then m is a prime if and only if. If and only if means equivalent statement. It's equivalent to say that m minus 1 factorial plus 1 is divisible by m. So kind of I can think that Wilson's theorem is a prime detector theorem. So it says that m is a prime, m is a prime if and only if m divides m minus 1 factorial plus 1. So the converse of this, like from right to left, it's not very difficult to prove. That is m dividing m minus 1 factorial plus 1 implies m is prime. Why would that be trivial? Because if you consider m as composite, then you will get that m minus 1 factorial is some multiple of m. Because if m is composite, it can be written as product of two numbers, let's say u and v, where u is also less than or equal to m minus 1 and v is also less than or equal to m minus 1. And they are different. So you can write u times v into the remaining numbers in the m minus 1 factorial, making it as m times k. So it will be a product of m and hence m own divide mk plus 1, right? So if m divides mk, it of course do not divide its next number. And that's why a composite number cannot satisfy this property. So m is a prime. But coming to the other way of the proof, the forward way. If m is a prime, how will I prove that m divides m minus 1 factorial plus 1? So it is an interesting proof. And that's why I will give you a short sketch of the proof. Then we will come back and easily solve this problem. Let's say that m is prime. So instead of m, I would prefer to use p. So let's say p is a prime and consider the following ideas. We say, so let a and b are integers. We say that a is inverse of b or multiplicative inverse of b modulo p if a into b leaves a reminder 1 when divided by p or it is congruent to 1 mod p. You can say it in both ways, both are the same. The reminder that it leaves should be 1. That is the meaning of inverse. And for this, we should have a prayer condition that GCD of b, p equals 1. So inverse exists for only co-prime numbers to that prime. And we can say that a is the inverse. So how will I know that there exists an inverse? Probably it can be understood using Bezut's lemma. So if you are not aware of Bezut's lemma, you can easily read that in online. And Bezut's lemma tells us that since B and P are co-prime, there exist integers say X and Y. There exist integers X and Y such that BX plus PY equals 1. And now if you consider modulo, then you would get BX being congruent to 1 mod P. So such a solution exists. Basically, the value of x I mean. So such a thing exists. And also, it is unique modulo p. We also have this solution x is unique modulo p. Let's remember that as well. 
And also, inverse of inverse is the same number. That means like, if you have b a into b congruent to 1, then it's clear that b into a is also congruent to 1. Of course, it's the same number, right? Now, this implies b is the a inverse modulo p. Because when b is multiplied with a, it leaves a remainder 1. That's the reason. All right, now let's go back to the proof of this theorem. So, we learned what are multiplicative inverses. Getting back, we know p minus 1 factorial is nothing but 1 into 2 into 3 into all the way till p minus 2 into p minus 1. Now, if you consider every number, I can pair them up with its inverse. So that they both multiply and make the resulting number congruent to 1. Right, that's the definition of inverse. And similarly, we can pair up 3 with some other number, 2 with some other number. We did not prove that uh, this is the number for, this is the inverse for each number. We are just using the fact that there exists some number and that is unique modulo p. There are no other numbers. So we can pair them up like this and also that inverse of inverse is the same number. So if you take 2 inverse, then the inverse of 2 inverse is again 2. So we can easily pair up all the numbers. But we will have a problem when inverse is that number itself. So let's find for which number the inverse is itself. Let's consider those numbers such that x into x is congruent to 1 mod p. And clearly x square minus 1 is congruent to 0 mod p. And that implies p divides x plus 1 into x minus 1. And that would happen when x is either 1 or p minus 1. So only for the numbers 1 and p minus 1, the inverse is itself. And that's when I can't pair up, right? Because I don't have two ones or two p minus 1. So that's why all these green pairs, the green arrows, each green pair will multiply to give 1. And only that remains would be 1 into p minus 1. All of them will turn up to 1 and 1 into anything is 1, right? So hence, it is congruent to p minus 1, which is essentially congruent to minus 1 mod p. So which means that p minus 1 factorial plus 1 is congruent to 0 mod p. Ta-da! We have proved that p divides p minus 1 factorial plus 1. So this is the sketch of the proof. So I request viewers to go back and uh, read about Bezout's lemma if you are not aware of. Let's go back to the problem once. It says that to prove the existence of an integer such that n square plus 1 is divisible by p. And since we know that p is a prime, I can now use the forward statement of Wilson's theorem. That is, p divides p minus 1 factorial plus 1. But let me tweak the p minus 1 factorial a little bit. First, let's consider only p minus 1 factorial. So this is equal to 1 times, 2 times, 3 times, 4 times, all the way till p minus 4 times, or uh, let me go till the half, it is p minus 1 by 2. And then you will have p plus 1 by 2 times p plus 3 by 2 all the way till p minus 4 into p minus 3 into p minus 2 times p minus 1. Now, take the product of first and the last term, that is 1 and p minus 1. And then the penultimate one and the number 2, that is 2 and p minus 2. And you can, and you can keep on moving like this. Now, this is congruent, like equal to p minus 1 times 2p minus 2 square times 3p minus 3 square. Remember, I am pairing up 3 and p minus 3, I am multiplying them. And 4 and p minus 4. So, until as well, I can write p plus 1 in this form. p minus p minus 1 by 2. To get p minus 1 by 2 times p minus p minus 1 by 2 the whole square. Now, I know that if I expand this, all the numbers except one number will be clearly a multiple of p. So, I will just represent it by p times some t. And then you will have minus 1 power, how many terms are there? 1 square, 2 square, 3 square and p minus 1 by 2 whole square. So, p minus 1 by 2 terms are there. So, minus 1 per p minus 1 by 2 into 1 square times 2 square times 3 square till p minus 1 by 2 the whole square. Because all the other terms are multiples of p though. So, hence this is congruent to minus 1 per p minus 1 by 2 
into 1 into 2 till p minus 1 by 2 the whole square. But remember, p is of the form 4k plus 1. So, if you think about p minus 1 by 2, it is equal to 2k, which is even. Hence, minus 1 power even is 1. So, I can write it as sum m square or maybe sum l square where l is equal to 1 into 2 into till p minus 1 by 2. So, what is the use of this? Why did we do this? It's very easy now. We have p minus 1 factorial congruent to l square mod p. Right? Remember, the congruency was taken mod p. So, if you add 1 both sides, you would get 1 plus p minus 1 factorial is congruent to l square plus 1. But, by the Wilson's theorem, by Wilson's theorem, I know that p minus 1 factorial plus 1 is congruent to 0. So, that implies l square plus 1 is congruent to 0 mod p. That implies p divides l square plus 1 and there exists such a number l with l square plus 1 divisible by p. So, we have proved that easily using the Wilson's theorem and the fact that p prime p is a prime of the form 4k plus 1. So, the notes of this video will be available in the description. You may go and download. We will meet in the next video. Thank you.